Hello there, thrill seekers. Good morning to you all. Today's Friday flashback comes from this disc. This is from September 4th, 2009 in Munich, Germany. I don't remember where we were talking, but I think this is an interesting video because I'm all backlit and you kind of see me. It's like one of those witness protection things where, you know, you're not supposed to know the identity of the person, so they make him all shadowy. Kind of looks like that. But the audio is clear and, and uh, so I think it works anyway. I am talking here about Dogen's essay, Fukan Zazengi, which is uh, usually translated as something like Universal Recommendation for the Practice of Zazen. It's his very detailed instructions on Zazen. And the part I've excerpted for you today is about the whole idea of thinking the thought of non-thinking, which uh, Dogen talks about, and it's one of his most interesting sort of recommendations for what you should do during Zazen. So here it is for you, and here I am in Munich back in 2009. Take it away, me in 2009. Uh, however, if there is a thousandth or a hundredth of a gap, heaven and earth are far apart, and if a trace of disagreement arises, we lose the mind in confusion. Uh, this is also stated uh, in a slightly different way in a poem called Shinjin Mei, which begins, the Buddha way is not difficult, just avoid picking and choosing, or just avoid preference, which we may talk about later if you want to. Uh, even if, proud of our understanding and richly endowed with realizations, we obtain special states of insight, attain the truth, clarify the mind, manifest a zeal that pierces the sky, and ramble through those remote spheres that are entered with the head, we have almost completely lost the vigorous path of getting the body out. Which I, I love this paragraph because he kind of describes everything that most people who get into meditation think meditation should be all about. Attaining the truth and special states of insight and rambling through the remote spheres and all this stuff. And then he says, no, that's not it. Moreover, remember the natural stage of Jetavana Park, which is Buddha. We can still see the traces of his six years of upright sitting. We can still hear rumors of the transmitter of the mind seal at Shaolin, which is Bodhidharma, the guy who brought Buddhism into China, uh, spending nine years facing a wall. The ancient saints were like this already. How could people today fail to practice wholeheartedly? And what he's saying basically is, if, if Zazen is good enough for Buddha and good enough for Bodhidharma, it's good enough for us too, uh, which is probably a response to the fact that Buddhism in Japan at that time and again today wasn't paying too much attention to Zazen practice. And so cease the intellectual work of studying sayings and chasing words. Learn the backward step of turning light around and reflecting it. Body and mind naturally drop off and the original face appears. If we want to attain the matter of the ineffable, we should urgently practice the matter of the ineffable. This is, ineffable is a word that Nishijima Sensei really loves, uh, but it's not a common English word, and most native speakers of English don't know it, and so I, I kind of assume it might be troubling here. Uh, it's, it, it means something that can't be explained or understood rationally, intellectually. In general, a quiet room is good for experiencing Zen balance, and food and drink are taken in moderation. Abandon all involvements, give them many things, myriad things, a rest. Do not think of good or bad. Do not care about right and wrong. Stop the driving movement of mind, will, and consciousness. Cease intellectual consideration through images, thoughts, and reflections. Do not aim to become a Buddha. How could that be connected with sitting or lying down? Usually, on the place where we sit, we spread a thick mat, and on top, of, on top of which we use a round cushion. Either sit in the full lotus posture or sit in the half lotus posture. To sit in the full lotus posture, first put the right foot on the left thigh, then put the left foot on the right thigh. To sit in the half lotus posture, just, sit, just press the left foot into the right thigh. Let the clothing hang loosely and make it neat. Then place the right hand over the left foot and place the left hand on the right palm. The thumbs meet and support each other. So this is the part I always hated chanting. <laughs> when we were chanting this, it just feels so ridiculous to chant this part of it. 
Just sit upright, uh, not leaning to the left, inclining to the right, slouching forward or arching backwards. It is vital that the ears and shoulders should be parallel to each other and that the nose and navel are also parallel to each other. Let the tongue spread against the roof of the mouth. Let the lips and teeth come together. The eyes should be kept open. Let the breath pass imperceptibly, imperceptibly through the nose and the B. Um, having ready the posture, make one complete exhalation and sway left and right, sitting in balance in the mountain still state. Think the concrete state of not thinking. How can the state of not thinking be thought? It is different from thinking. This is the secret of sitting zazen. This is also the part of Fukan Zazengi that everybody uh, gets messed up about. It's, this translation is, I don't know the, what you use for the, I'm actually, actually curious, maybe I'll ask later what you use for the German translation, because in mm -hmm. Japanese, he says the, the think the state of not thinking is mu shiryo. So shiryo is thinking or consideration, and mu is a denial, non. Uh, in English. And then the student asks, how do we think the think of, how do we think the state of not thinking? And the teacher answers, uh, hishiryo. And hishiryo is a, a stronger denial of, of thinking. Uh, so he is like, com comparing it to English, it's, uh, it comes up in like the Japanese words for illegal, uh, immoral, uh, something that's not just like you, illegal, legal and illegal are very strong and different. You know, if you said non-legal, that would be, you know, something that would be, you know, oh, that's non-legal sounds a little bit less, you know, of a crime than illegal. So, so that's the way, um, the way it, it is in Japanese. So that, that's what he's saying there. And it doesn't translate well into English. I don't know if it translates well into English. It's well, uh, extremely difficult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, I can talk about okay. it there often a, okay. a bit good. about this. Good. This is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a really a linguistic thing, though. But so, so the idea is, uh, the, the one thing I like about this is that he doesn't go any further with it. So. A lot of times when you get to this point and, and people will ask and, and debate and talk for ages about what is hishiryo. Uh, so, uh, but Dogen just leaves us with that word, hishiryo, and he doesn't, he doesn't really go on any further than that. So it's kind of, the way I take that is that it's up to all of us to figure out what that means. Uh, for me, it's not so important to try to stop thinking, because when you try to eh, stop thinking, that just makes more stuff happen in your head, and it's not really very good. So what I do is I allow thought to just continue without really paying too much attention to it. And that's something that's a little difficult, because we're usually trained from a very early age to pay very close attention to thought, to the point where we, th we believe that attention and thought are exactly the same thing. But it's not really. There's just sort of this, your, your brain does things. Uh, there's energy moving around in there and that manifests itself as thought and it can create images and so on and so forth. But it's not really necessary to give that too much attention. And, and once you see that it's possible not to give that attention, uh, it's a really big relief. However, it takes a lot of zazen, I think, for most people to get to that point. For me, it, I probably was doing zazen for 10 or 15 years uh, before I ever really caught on to, to how you can just let thoughts go. Like just completely let go, and and it doesn't always happen that way. Uh, somebody asked a question, like, what was the question? Do you ever are you ever aware of when you're slipping into thought 
Like you sometimes are sitting and you 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 notice that for the last two and a half hours it seems like you've been contemplating your ex girlfriend and why she should not have taken all your records or whatever it is uh, that you are contemplating very deeply. Just to name one that sometimes comes up in my mind, uh, but uh, and 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 the person was asking, do you ever notice when that starts? And I would say almost never. And so that uh, that's just the way it goes. But when you notice it's it's going on, as soon as you notice it, it's a bit like if you if you if if you have an apartment where there are cockroaches. If you've ever lived in one of those, I have a few times. Uh, you'll come home and you switch on the lights and all the cockroaches run away. <laughs> That's kind of what the thoughts do when you notice them. Uh, uh, if, if you notice them and don't start playing with them, they'll just sort of go, oh my god! And then they just run. Uh, which is good, but sometimes they come right back out again because there's some tasty little morsel left out. You know. 